Hello, hello Loop, hello world. This is Holly and I'm going to share the link for our Hangout. Um, here and also I will share it on Loop. Today's Hangout we are going to try to talk about games we played as children. And hopefully a few folks will join me. And we'll see what happens there. And hopefully we won't have any conflicts with connections today. Sometimes we have very smooth days. Other times we have challenges. We'll see what happens today. And let's see. So I don't see anyone joining me here yet, but I will hope. So it is the holiday season. Behind me you can probably see Santa Claus poking around on either shoulder. Um, a star I have up and uh, the sun's probably not letting you see very well, but there's another little Santa Claus in my closet, China closet behind me. And I have, I brought this to share with you, is a little reindeer. My mom makes these out of natural things she finds around. So his little antlers are made from uh, kusa, a dogwood tree. And his body and head are from teasels. And his legs are from a weeping cherry tree. A cute little seed for a tail. I'm not sure how clearly you can see this. Um, little beady eyes saying hello. But she makes these and tries to share them um, with friends every year. So Santa and his reindeer are adorning our house. And I'm still hoping a few folks will join me. I hope, I hope. So I'm wondering what games you may have played when you were a child. If you check the link um, I shared for our website, Loop, we have a post from a member, a looper, who is studying for the IELTS exam. And she started a very, uh, what's turned into a very interesting post about games. And I don't know uh, if you all recognize or hear, this is an old-fashioned slinky. And we had many hours of fun with slinkies when I was a child. My brothers and I would get, one of us would get a new slinky every year at Christmas. Um, and we had fun with them on the stairs going down, down. Um, and in general, a lot of fun with a slinky. We often had many different games that we would play with um, a little bouncy ball. I found this one that is shaped like a globe, it looks like a globe, so it seemed appropriate to share. But so many games with balls, little balls, tinier ones, larger ones, specially shaped balls, many games rotate around balls. Just going to check back quickly on our site to see if anyone is posting a help note. 
um, but it looks rather quiet. Diana, one of the other teachers on our site, mentioned that she might be able to join us today um, a little bit late. So I will continue talking for a few moments, hoping to see a few more loopers talk about games you played when you were younger. So playing with little cars or trucks, the Matchbox series, I don't even know if they still make matchbox cars and trucks, uh, but I had a lot of fun with my brothers who collected them and friends who collected them. I loved to play outdoors um, around the trees. I would pretend that the roots were fancy high-rise garages in a city somewhere, or I'd pretend I was the driver. Um, a lot of imaginary playing with cars and trucks and we had different sorts along with the matchbox cars and trucks we had larger ones tiny plastic ones some would come free in cereal maybe um, I don't remember exactly did you ever get toys free in cereal boxes or in other groceries um, Lots of things to talk about with games and toys. Games you can play alone um, included solitaire with cards, decks of cards, and many different versions of solitaire. I spent many hours playing with myself, um, solitaire, and sometimes would uh, cheat so that I could win or make my own new rule that would help me to win. When I was young, my brothers and I often received these um, as gifts and also spent many hours manipulating the letters. You'd have to move it up, try and get one, two, three, can't do this backwards, <laughs> one, two, three, four uh, in sequence, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in sequence and move the little tiles around. My one brother was very good at these and we often in our Christmas stockings from Santa would all get one, each of us would get one and it would be a race to see who could uh, quickly get the numbers in sequence correctly and that reminds me of Rubik's Cubes. They were popular and I don't know if they are still around, if they are still a popular uh, event or not. I do wish others would join. I'd much rather talk with you and hear your stories. Bingo is another game I played a lot um, as a child and used a lot in teaching. I have never tried bingo in an online environment. And there must be some online versions of bingo. But in bingo, you would have your bingo boards, right? Different boards. Everyone's would have everyone's card would have different numbers on it. And you would get the um, bingo number. The caller would call a number. And if you had that number, for example, if I called O72 and I'd say, yes, I have that. And I'd put a marker here. Everyone gets the free marker. I can't do this backwards. <laughs> a free marker. Uh, and you would try to get a diagonal or a horizontal or a vertical row uh, of numbers covered. In English or language learning, many people play bingo to find the correct past tense verb form, for example. Uh, who has the past tense of this verb? And you'd hold up a verb 
or word card. So bingo is another game that many of you may have played. And I am going to check back again for messages. Not seeing any messages. So what about this? A die. Roll the dice. I have one die. You roll the dice. If you um, have any games that involve using uh, the dice, I hope you will join the Hangout and tell me about them or try adding a post on loop and talk about them. There are many board games and different games that involve um, the use of rolling the dice. Sometimes one die, sometimes usually two, and many games involve doubles. Parcheesi is one game that comes to mind. Yahtzee is another that uses many die. I don't know if any of you have played or do play Yahtzee. It's another game I have spent a lot of time playing and have used in the classroom to practice numbers, uh, especially in beginning English classes. And Yahtzee is a good game to have if you need extra dice for the classroom use. You get several in a Yahtzee game. I think that's the end of my collection <laughs> that I brought to share with you, hoping there would be others joining me uh, to keep the conversation going. The last one I have, this is a favorite of mine, um, try and hold it at an angle so you can see and you might be able to see the little movement there. This is a game that is um, old, a toy that's old, a puzzle and it actually would not be sold today because that um, little dot you see moving around is mercury it's actually a bit of mercury, which we now know to be poisonous. And there's a maze. And the idea here is that you are supposed to get all of this mercury into the very center of this maze. You can see there are different places um, that you can enter. And if you hold it upside down, and shake it. I don't know if it'll show or not, but lots of little pieces. You can see a, a smaller piece here. It it uh, the mercury divides up, so you have to get all of the mercury together, and then try very carefully to slide it inside the maze. Trying to hold it very quiet there. Now, oh, part of it. See if I can get more of it in and then try to show you inside. I have part of it inside. Uh, I don't know if it'll show or not. But it's a very difficult puzzle, fun and also useful for keeping little hands occupied. And I still have no one joining me. It's been 10 minutes. So I had several loopers who claimed they were going to join today. I don't know where they are. So I will try to publicly, publicly embarrass them. They were, I guess I can't, because they were all might attends. 
Um, so several members who said they might attend, but none of you are here. I'll use the time to talk a little bit about Loop, Learn English with a Worldwide Perspective, Loop. We are just shy of 1,000 members now. I hope we will have 1,000 members uh, before the first of the year. You're welcome to join Loop. Welcome to take a look. There's a lot on the site you can see without joining and a lot more that you can participate in if you do join our site. Learn English with a worldwide perspective. We have live classes. Um, some, like this one, are free uh, to attend. Many do require a payment. Um, are more structured and have pre-assignments. For these Thursday with Holly classes, I do always post um, an opening topic prior to class and always hope that you will uh, check that, think about it, plan some vocabulary to practice, or ask a question. For our courses and other classes, we have several. Um, I invite you to check our site, lewwp.com, loop.com, and explore the site. If you like what you see, sign up, sign in. When you are a registered member and sign in to the site, you have access to our text chat space with many helpful members uh, to help you find your way around the site. We have nearly 200 themed groups on our site. Most are public, open to the public. Some are private for our courses um, where people are uh, people who pay to join a class. Aha! I have a visitor. Hello, Bilal. Hello, Holly. You're going How to are rescue you doing? me. I'm Holly. very tired of talking to myself. <laughs> really? Okay. Talking the to the here. talking to the world, but no one else to talk with me to the world. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's been welcoming for me too to being here with you, you know, or being here with you, not to be in. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I was trying to talk about, and I shared, um, if you watch the recording, you'll see I shared several ga games. We're talking about games we played as children. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so what games do you remember? Well, honestly, it could be like silly, but this is the honest way that I need to tell you that way. It's like that I've been... Um, playing those video games, um, not much of the bingo or maybe, uh, I don't know, those numbers-oriented games. I was not interested with them, actually. It's like, you know, Super Mario, um, you, you know. Mario, I remember yeah, Mario, Mario, Super Mario. Okay. Yeah, it's my favorite. Uh, I, okay. It, it's still my favorite, right? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You still play. I haven't played a video game in so long, and I think it's funny I didn't even mention them. <laughs> uh, but that shows my age. There were not very many video games <laughs> when I was a child. Yeah. Is certainly true. Interesting. So what other video games do you play? Well, recently, like, you know, there are really sophisticated uh, video games and, and very kind of you get in the real life of the video game, like you're experiencing the real world in it. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, the um, Call of Duty, it's really well known, you know. Uh, it's an yes, American I... video game, it's really well known and very, very sophisticated and um, enjoyable, whatever you want to call it, just really good. And I, I think it's Addicting? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this might be one reason why I haven't tried 
uh, video games. I certainly have no right. no time in my life to get addicted to such oh. things. Uh, and more screen time I don't need. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, do you play on a smartphone or do you have to play on a larger device? No, actually it has to be played on larger devices and and you should have like a very really modern and up to date um, cards like video card of your laptop and those kind of things mm -hmm. that like advancements for for you so you can play easily without any lag in the game itself. But um, <laughs> nowadays I really enjoy playing chess online. You know, it's really simple. Rules are no, are known and. It's uh, quite challenging when you play with another buddy. I don't know online people, you know. And do you do you play live, or you do your move and wait until your partner is online to to make the next move? Do you stay online together, or is it like you'll make a play in the morning and wait until that night to see a response? <laughs> it shouldn't be this way. Well. You know and that we play it online and, 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 and the same way as live that okay I do the step he does the step and we have like a limit of two minutes or five minutes so we ah, can make okay. our next step. Yeah. Okay. Now when I played chess, some some people I played with um, would take a lot longer than two minutes to make just study the board and make the next move. Um, so I wondered how they would do that online. Do you talk? While you're playing, do you voice chat while you're playing? Yes, uh, the application that I use is is not having like those kind of uh, um, maybe audio talks or maybe video, but it has the text. You know, you can just chat and text. But I don't use it actually. Nobody uses it. I mean, very rarely people use it. Yeah, chat's a quieter game than some. You usually don't want the distractions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I've played Scrabble online um, not very often because I just don't have time. But I, I like this game, word game, Scrabble. And I know there are different uh, groups that play actively online both ways. That's why I asked about whether you... Uh, play live or whether you wait. I know there are Scrabble games that are timed and there are some where you just have a partner and you have an ongoing series of games where um, it's just whoever makes the next move you have to wait until it's your turn again <laughs> and you yeah, can play. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yes, well in that way maybe you could just have a, a cup of coffee or tea or just, just decide to <laughs> Yeah, enjoy the moment. Uh, right, right. Um, do you play video games in person with other friends, like side by side, playing the same or different games and just enjoying companionship while you're playing with someone else, or can you play together? I don't, I don't know how video games work today. Can you be no. physically side by side and play? Um. Well. Um... To me, um, it's like you know playing online with other people from other countries, or maybe from your country, and and apparently you don't know who's playing. I mean, until oh. you end the, the yes, yes. Hmm. you're playing with until maybe apparently you, you don't know until you finish the round maybe. So you look at the computers or maybe. Ah, okay. Yes. Huh. So you just log in and you're matched matched with someone. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. Right. Fun. So do you usually well, win? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you couldn't just ask me this. Or maybe, uh, <laughs> but I have to answer it either way. That uh, I usually lose. So I should not have asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> Yeah. You, d you could have made up an answer. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I was trying to be just like honest. Mm. But maybe I way. made a mistake. Good way to be. <laughs> Honesty is, is yeah. a good good character trait. Uh, ah, wow. So video games and chess. Mm. So what other online games are there? 
I hear people oh, talk on about Facebook. If you use Facebook, but I think you don't use it. Uh, I not for game. games. I don't. I don't join any yeah. games. There is one well, farm, farm yeah. something, Farmville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have it's many exactly friends fun. who play. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But honestly, I um, personally, I think it's it's really a silly game that consumes a lot of your time. And I mean, I think that uh, it's like Tim Whispers. It's like. Time waster? Is that what you said? Uh, time, time, time waster. Oh, yeah, bad. time wasters. Yes, I, uh, I don't need those. I have enough lack of time in my life without wasting more of it. <laughs> ah, my my to do lists are too long. Uh, interesting. So, do young children um, still play games with their friends in person? Do you do you see many young children in your area, or are most young children online now? I think most of them are online. They're playing mm. online with wow. their friends. And wow, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 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 So what are some games young children might play today if they're not online? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it doesn't matter nowadays because... If you don't play it online, you can play it offline, and and it's like you have installed everything on your computer, and you're playing it with the computer, and you have opponents either way. I mean, uh, so it's not a problem with that, and and they can play it, and it could be very competitive, like uh, the game itself, playing offline. So mom says you have to get offline, off the computer. What does a kid do? <laughs> <laughs> the family goes into digital detox. <laughs> uh, and no more no more devices. So what's a family to do? Uh, and Holly, can I ask you something that is not related to our today's subject? Sure. Thursdays possible. with Holly is a... Open yeah. conversation. Yep. Well, I'm also <laughs> depleting this moment because nobody else is here. No. Uh, so m my question is that I'm going to take the TOEFL test for the uh, English proficiency, mm -hmm. um, and maybe I can take both the TOEFL and the IELTS, which is the mm -hmm. British version of, of the English proficiency. But uh, concerning um, my speaking. Um, skills. Where do you think I should just work on and improve my accent, maybe, or the grammar, or the, the the words usage, whatever you feel like. I think you're ready to ace the speaking part. Um, I don't think you'll have any problem at all from what I've heard. The different times you've joined here, you seem very aware of many topics, very comfortable. Um, usually self-correct or recognize if there's a pronunciation error. Um, I think you'll do just fine. Um, have you done any practice tests yet? I, 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 yes, actually I did the IELTS, but it was the general, not the, the academic. Mm, yeah. Or the academic, yeah. Ac academic, um, academic. Academic, yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but... Uh, on the writing thing, I mean, on the writing subject, I was I was really kind of uh, having lack of time. I couldn't just uh, maybe write as much as I wanted, like. But, so it's, um, the time ran really out really before it. you finished. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe because of practicing, I was not really. Yeah, well. that's one of the yeah. most important things to recognize and practice more, so that you can um, finish within the time constraints time constraints a little easier um, and hopefully always leave time to read it through to yourself again for editing um, and at least one read through can often uh, help you correct many simple things that will help your score boost help boost your score um, yeah so yeah, the TOEFL is a uh, still, I think, a challenging exam. The IELTS academic um, can be. I, I seem to sense, um, I don't know because I'm not uh, 
an examiner for either of them anymore, but I sense that the IELTS is often, not always, but often scored a little um, more generously than the TOEFL. It's challenging to get a high score in TOEFL. Uh, that's really true. And uh, uh, let me tell you something that happened to me in that IELTS test for the, for the general uh, one. Um, uh, an interviewer who was a British, uh, he asked me something. He asked me about um, the plants. He said that, okay, Bilal, back in your country, in your home, uh, what kind of plants did you raise or do you raise, he said. And I really, really just heard that he said plants. I was just, just going to say, I didn't hear the T, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The tea and I was really confused at what he was uh, mm. So I have two options, either to answer whatever the question is, um, I mean, in the way that I just thought it could be planned, but I could just ask him, and for a clarification, like, okay, would you mind explaining what plans mean? And I did that, the second option. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, oh, plan is something you, you raise on whatever, whatever. So I thought, that, okay, I'm silly, I'm real silly. I, I just have to know this, but honestly, I don't like the uh, British accent. You know, it's kind of uh, difficult for listening. Uh, um, for you, interesting. Yeah, I, I've heard many stories that make me uncomfortable with some of the speaking, with the subjectivity that comes into play that you have no control over. Um, and sometimes, even though they are supposed to comply with um, rather strict requirements of the setting, I've heard many stories that um, are against the policies as I understand them for uh, noise, background noise that might be interfering or distracting. So lots of things uh, can make it difficult. But in those um, exams, especially in the um, speaking part, you can gain points by asking for clarification. Um, can you spell that word or are you saying plans or plants if you have a suspicion in your mind? Um, certainly that's that's something that's totally okay to ask and should be a plus rather than a negative. But it is a part of the challenge. Similarly with the writing, sometimes you get prompts that just happen to hit something you don't know much or anything about. Um, and that's bad luck of the draw when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like tossing a coin, you, you won't never know. Mm. I will um, do a, a little bit of promotion. I don't know um, if you have explored the Edulang site, edulang.com, um, but uh, Brad Patterson is a member of our site, not, not active at all, but um, I like the, his Edulang site, um, but they have an option there where you pay what you can. So you have to pay at least one dollar, but that's all you have to pay. Um, and you can register to take five practice exams um, there. So uh, interesting site, lots of study material if you feel you still need that. But even just for the practice exams, um, it's a good way to, to get that timing down. Their practice exams are not full length. Um, I forget if they're two-thirds or half the length of the real test, but it still is is good time to practice um, and an option to look into there. There are so many resources now for for preparing. What did you use as your primary method to prepare? Um, well, for, the, for this IELTS, um, actually uh, one day before the test, um, I was like going and uh, surfing or maybe uh, just making searches of a Google and the internet and I found some some kind of stuff so it was like preparing in, in the in the last second um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually I didn't True confession. Anything, honestly. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Mm. But you so, took the general also, you said, not the yeah. academic. Yeah. And you know why? Because I, I was planning to make the immigration to Canada. Mm -hmm. And but, that's all they require. <laughs> yes, mm. but it turned out to be like I have the failure. Because in the writing test, I took 5.5, and, and the limit that I need, uh, the minimum that I need to score is 6 out of uh, 9. Okay. So I was frustrated, actually. But I knew that I didn't have time. If I had time, I would do better. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's not a good idea to take any standardized exam without some practice of the, just the structure of the exam, just so you have a... You can say that uh, I'm too confident. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but that's still a nice for for no preparation on the general. I would expect you to score um, uh, at least a five, so five point five is not terrible. Um, and if you'd give yourself a week of practice, you'd probably score much higher. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just being being aware of what what to expect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you schedule yourself to take the exam again? I did, yes. Um, and actually, I think that I'm going to take the TOEFL because I think that my way of speaking or uh, my accent is really closer to the American one rather than the British one because, well, you know, as I told you, I really love, you know, hate the, the British accent, especially the Irish one and the uh, Scots one. Terrible. So you're on the opposite end of the spectrum. Most people are... More people, I think, love British accent uh, over American. So uh, I don't like uh, being in the floor, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay too. Um, so, have you prepared for the TOEFL? I am still. Okay. Um, yes, I, I downloaded a PDF uh, book, and it has all the materials for the writing and for the speaking. And, and the thing that is really, really important about writing, I think, is the strategy. And it gives and points out some kind of strategies that I need to follow if I'm asked for, for example, for an opinion or maybe for a clarification mm -hmm. or for mm -hmm. whatever. You know, like steps you have to take. And this is what I wanted because I don't have time and, and it's really kind of challenging. So I need not to think about a strategy. I need to just have a strategy in mind and put it in place and just do it. Um, in your own language, do you write a lot? Do you have a I, lot of confidence and practice in writing? Well, you might be like um, laughing over this, but I have to tell you this. Um, my language, in my language, I think I'm, I'm really weak. Um, mm. I think in English I'm better than my language. And it's uh. really weird. <laughs> uh, you're not the first one who said uh, something similar, um, but it, it often is a, a a clue as to where to where to focus your strategies for passing. It is, comes from your own personal experience in your own first languages, uh, language or languages. Yeah, so uh, vocabulary on a TOEFL will really help. Um, a, a vocabulary used appropriately um, will help a lot. The rubrics for examiners to score the TOEFLs are, and the calibration process is um, stricter. So if you follow uh, the official guidelines uh, or study the official guidelines well to know what to expect, that can help you focus um, what you most need to work on um, for preparation. And the listening activities, uh, they have different uh, types of listening activities for the TOEFL? Have you practiced some of those? I guess I did. Um, the listening, I think, is not a big deal because most of them are, are going to be like lectures. Uh, so I'm going to listen to a lecture, whatever the subject is, and then I'll be asked about that. You know, like, um, yeah. So it's not really complicated. Uh, I think that the, the two things I need to uh, focus on, in the first place, the writing, because, uh, you know, time, 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 which is really yeah. at the moment. It's interesting uh, with 
TED Talks and MOOCs, the massive open online courses available now, and just the plethora of materials of video online now, I think we're going to see a shift in the uh, TOEFL and other similar exams where writing is increasingly going to be the problem area and the listening that used to be a really difficult area for many is less and less of a challenge because there are so many real materials out there to practice with um, and more people spending more time uh, listening this way. Uh, so the writing, many, many teachers are lamenting the decline in writing ability. So I, I don't know how the education system in general and the standardized tests are going to adapt. doesn't help you this time around, but I suspect we're going to be seeing some changes there. Hmm. I, I think that too. And I noticed something actually about the writing and about the, the, the speaking, like, you know that we have to use idioms, we have to use um, some sort of uh, vocabularies that are not really well, or uh, maybe not, not really frequently used, like, for example, uh, cardinal, cardinal rule or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those things that, okay, we memorize, but actually, for me, I don't use them. Like, I'm talking to you right now, I've been talking for about maybe... Uh, uh, 30 minutes or 30 minutes, but I was not using any kind of idiom or one of those vocabularies, so it's quite confusing to me, actually. Yes, and I find with writing in particular, um, many people who are fairly comfortable speaking an idiom have trouble writing it in the correct form. Um, idioms are strange and there are lots of them but you're right that does help a lot on your score to be able to to use an appropriate an idiom appropriately speaking and in writing um, but using it appropriately is important and challenging um, so there are uh, some idioms that are more adaptable to many different circumstances than others and practicing with a handful that might be usable in multiple contexts um, is one trick that, that many people practice with. An awful lot of it is luck, what you have come across before, what, um, what feels comfortable in your attitude that day. The, the uh, standardized tests are just that. They, they, are, they are standardized and they don't truly assess um, your everyday competence, unfortunately. So they have some degree of proficiency based on how well you take tests <laughs> as much as how, how strong your English is. Uh, well, honestly, I think it's, it's the better or maybe the best way to assess people. Like, for, for example, engineering. That In Canada, I noticed that they take, like, um, a, a very general, maybe or specific uh, test for the engineers, they, uh, the graduates, so they mm -hmm. can assess them as if they can be a professional engineer, and this is the title. It's not like engineer, okay, whatever. No, you have to be a professional engineer in order to get a job in the market. So in order to take this title, you have to pass the exam, and the exam has to be like a general engineering, or, or I think this this way, yes. So whatever I think or whenever there are exams to assess people upon criteria or, 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 or whatever, I'm saying whatever too much, I know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you're very, but you're very aware of, of things that could improve and that's, that's helpful also. Um, yeah, I really don't perceive you having difficulty with the speaking um, part at all. I think we're, I'm hoping we're going to see the whole world move towards a badges or credentials, credential specific system where we, we don't need as many um, of these broad standardized tests, but people who do a lot of <clears throat> self-study and have experiences online that may not be through an accredited institution or a recognized name um, can show their skills. 
um, with a badge. And if you have that credential, any employer or university should be able to give you a specific challenge to assess whether or not you truly have earned that credential or whether it's for show only. But I think specific credentials show a lot more than a diploma or a transcript um, from a general, general course of study. And in engineering, there are so many new engineering fields um, constantly uh, being developed that um, the specifics are what matter much more for um, most employers or the fact that you have mastered more than one level um, uh, of genre in a different field demonstrates your flexibility, your ability to learn, your interest and curiosity in learning. Um, so I'm hoping we're going to see more of this. And online portfolios, this is what I want to see assessments move to. But very challenging, um, not fair to everyone, not everyone has access, and still susceptible to hacking and cheating. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Uh, but I think if you have your own portfolio where you can show your standardized test score, but you can show what you want to show that proves what you want the world to know about you um, is a much clearer. And if you're online and connected, it's easy to do in today's world. Um, well, that's really good advice, but uh, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to post anything like about my 5.5 writing. <laughs> not now. <laughs> uh, that's one nice yeah. feature of the standardized tests is you don't have to. You choose when to share them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But but truly, for not preparing, that's not a bad score at all. Perhaps a blow to your confidence at <laughs> at not needing to prepare. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the thing is, like, uh, well, you you could say that the bright side about this, like, I, I take or I took a six point five the average for the four sections: speaking, writing, reading, and listening. Nice. But for the writing, I was really having a bad luck. Yeah. So hopefully you've been practicing since then and writing more. Uh, if you want to write well, something. you need to write. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you really write, and the 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 thing that we more—I mean, you and I have a mutual thing. Like, we don't have time, and and me the same. Like, um, um, I spend about ten hours at work, and two hours transportation, so, so twelve hours. Uh, so you need also at least six hours of sleeping. Uh, so as a total, you're talking about 18 hours. So what is left? About five or six hours. Uh, come on. <laughs> yeah, it is a, a discipline matter. Um, and again, that the timing can be um, really helpful in preparation. Set a timer and just write until that timer goes off. Um, and what I suggest... Um, to build build yourself into the rhythm is to write on a topic that you are familiar with or that you enjoy writing about um, even if it may not be a topic that you're ever going to have a chance of being assigned uh, just to see that just to get uh, your brain and your body used to writing Diana hello hello, hello Diana <laughs> can you hear me I can hear you. I'm okay. so glad, glad to hear you. Yay, hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> ah. Oh, and there she is. Oh, hello. hello. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes, I'm ah. so sorry. I tried to join, uh, to join Hangout. I actually was on time, but I, probably there were some problems with plugins, and I had to, um, you ah. know, had to download. Uh, plug in for uh, for uh, handouts one more time and try to you know to start the system again so yeah it can yeah. take forever there have been a lot of updates lately right. I noticed, noticed some new changes in the 
hang yeah. out when I started today. They let you schedule them better now. <laughs> so, so we're here with Bilal talking about uh, to TOEFL prep. Uh, ah, okay. So, so he's looking for tips on how to pass the writing without writing practice. Ah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's a good question, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm trying to get him to to uh, time timed practice on topics that he is comfortable writing about and building towards uh, better success. But he's in the excuse mode, right, Bilal? Hi. <laughs> so you you cannot you cannot give it an advice how to do that without practicing actually right? Yeah, so writing. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know how to get ready for writing without <laughs> writing. Yeah. Balal, are you still with us? Oh, have we lost him? Yes, I'm here. Oh no, there he is. And okay. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me ask you something. Is imagination play a good role here? Like, if I can imagine that I'm writing something about a a, a topic that I really <laughs> like, would help mm -hmm. without writing anything? Well, uh, I have another question to you. Uh, if you imagine doing push-ups, does it help your abs to get stronger? <laughs> <laughs> well. I don't imagine push-ups. I do push-ups. So well, wow. maybe. <laughs> so so a with push writing, pencil. <laughs> no, probably it's the same with writing. I'm afraid well, so. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe uh, when you imagine that you're writing, you're trying to form some kind of ideas or maybe sentences in, in your mind. So whenever you do that, you just like you're the same as writing thing, you know. You you imagining yeah. the sentences, the words, the ideas, but you're not writing them down, so yeah. it could be helping. Yeah, it certainly can help, especially if you um, have a list of prompts. And so, with every push-up, you're thinking about a new a new prompt yeah. uh, and, and getting the vocabulary and the idioms in place. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing up my vocabulary. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it seems so complicated, you know. It's probably easier just to take that pen and just write write it down, you know. It seems much so, much more easier for me. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is. Yeah, but the timing so aspect. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> uh, having been an examiner, I can tell you that's definitely true. <laughs> uh, some of the examples that come through are pretty sad sometimes. I see I have the sun playing games on my face here. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to find a position where I'm not quite so sun blinded, but I guess it's not going to happen. So I have a, a strange white white chin <laughs> from <laughs> from <laughs> so you have a beard or something? <laughs> yeah, it looks like Santa's beard. Ah, yeah, oh. cool. <laughs> oh, it's so sunny. It is, which is very nice. We haven't seen much of it lately, so mm. I, I am not complaining. Mm. Is it warm? warm? No, 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 no. <laughs> warm is not a word that applies. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we won't see warm for a while, I don't think. Right. Uh, yeah, it's been cold there too, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You mean here, in Ukraine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, today it's not it's not that bad. It's um, the snow is melting actually, so it's about zero. So mm -hmm. not so bad. Humid, you know, humidity is so yeah, so uh, damp. So high. Yeah. Right, right. But but not so bad. I mm -hmm. I like it actually. So I had a lot of things to do today. So I was it was hard for me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> after after it cold oh. yesterday, it was quite warm for me today. Mm. Yeah. So let's give Bilal a topic to write about, and he can sure. write write verbally. For right us. now. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Imagine we'll let him, writing. We'll, we'll let him practice his theme, his Absolutely. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Push ups. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't have a TOEFL book within. Grasp. Um, let's see. There's sure to be a question somewhere about mm -hmm. global warming. Oh my goodness! Oh, 
I don't so want depressing, it. depressing <laughs> topic. Oh, yeah, I don't want it. Yeah. But it, it yeah. makes its way into almost every standardized uh, well, exam. Well, I can be really yeah. useful of, of saying something about global warming. I can start with my writing with global warming is, is not really good for the Earth. And yes, it has many negatives, which I really can't count. I don't know if that's really um, right or not. All right, so not really good for the earth. You can speak that in better terms right there. We can start. <laughs> oh, the sunshine is crazy. Mm. So you have a global warming there. Yeah. <laughs> right, we can see. We can so you see have to write that. about it. Right. I think you have can... to write about it, right? <laughs> No, we can see the effects of the global warming just right now, you know, seeing, <laughs> watching Holly on our screen, you know, half blinded yeah. with that, with that, <laughs> yes, bright, bright, bright spot on her face. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> you write about her, right? <laughs> right, let's just write Holly. Ideas. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's do some synonym practice. Surely okay. you can eliminate the word good from your essays. Uh, and come up with a better adjective. Okay, there we go. Not really mm, for the earth. Good is not good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, okay, we could say beneficial. Hey, there you go. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, yeah. mm. Much stronger, <laughs> uh, yeah, immediate, is, yeah. immediate points, <laughs> and if you make a statement is not really good, you had best be able to support it, right? That's a very strong statement. Um, so you might qualify it by finger pointing at others, so researchers, yes. many scientists, many researchers. Um, are at opposite ends of the spectrum is a phrase we might use. Uh, polarized is a word you might be able to put into use. Mm -hmm. Polarized points of view. <laughs> uh, is that lots you can say. Or something? I'm sure you can find it, yes. I just ran into it in an article from Huffington Post today. Okay. That sounds British. Sounds British? <laughs> hmm, yeah. interesting. Interesting. I mean, the way I don't know you why. spell it, right? Hmm. Well, British would spell up. We lost Diana. Oh, we lost both of you. Okay. Not sure what happened. Hmm. I don't know if we're losing me also. Hmm. What is happening? The global warming is affecting our broadcast. We only have five minutes left to the hour. I'll wait another minute or so and then stop the broadcast if folks don't come back. Well, I'm not sure what's happened here. Hmm. Ah, there's Bilal back again. Yeah, I'm back. 
Not sure what happened. You, you both yeah, disappeared. <laughs> you both okay. dropped. I don't know what okay. happened. Hmm? Uh, maybe, All of, no, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I would, quite seriously, would recommend at least thinking and preparing for an environmental global warming question because it's very rare to get through an exam without um, without that coming into play in one way or another. So whether you like the topic or not, I would recommend that you try <laughs> try to practice right. with it. Yeah. I mean, yes, this is the case that it, it, it probably happened, maybe it, it would happen to me, like I'm given a subject that I really don't like, and I really don't have any, any idea about that. Maybe a few ideas about that. Maybe yes. So I need to write about it. You know, it's an exam. Yeah. And even uh, if you follow your own uh, wishful practice and think it through and um, talk it through verbally or imaginarily, uh, is better than nothing. Um, there are sites if you research through or if you check on on Loop in our exam prep group, we have a. I hope it. I hope it's there. There should be a link there to a list of 100 topics, um, practice topics. And even if you just keep that in your pocket and make yourself uh, check them off as you've thought them through, um, so that you are fairly well-rounded approach. And if you see a, a persistent general topic that you're not comfortable with, that's what you should practice uh, because. Uh, it will help bring you to less panic at the time time of the exam. So Diana, you both disappeared at the same time. I don't know what oh. happened, but <laughs> you, <laughs> you you both both left, and we only have a couple minutes left. I was just yeah, about I'm so sorry. <laughs> just about ready to uh, close the hangout when you both came back. So um, so last wow. brilliant questions, comments, topics. <laughs> oh, brilliant. You want too much of me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, brilliant doesn't come easily to many sure. of us. <laughs> Although Bilal seems to think he's he's ready, right? So he's he's feeling feeling brilliant is a good way to be feeling as you enter an exam. <laughs> oh well it's like feeling confident, right? You know? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is better. It is better to to feel confident than the way I usually feel before my exams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sitting here looking at myself and hoping that I don't really look this bad. <laughs> For <laughs> the sun, the sunlight is really, really strange. Uh, we're so just seeing your your half of the face. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> feel like uh, Zorro or the nest. <laughs> the, nest. <laughs> uh, the sun really, really fell at the wrong angle. Uh, I was going to go hide in my little room where the light is controlled, but I thought it would be fun to have Santas behind me and spread a little holiday cheer, uh, seasonal, yeah. seasonal cheer. And if you watch the recording, I started out in much better lighting situation than we're ending up. Uh, but Diana, I'm really glad to have a, even a few minutes to say hello again um, and see you. And Bilal, I really thank you for rescuing me. I had the first 15 My minutes pleasure. or so just talking to the air. So it's nice to have uh -huh. company. <laughs> and best My wishes. Pleasure, yes. Yeah, best Thank wishes you. if you do take the exam. You too. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Take care, everyone. Okay, bye bye. Bye, Diana. Bye, Bilal. Bye. Bye, Diana. Bye, Holly. Bye bye.